The winter that we've just been through in the UK was not a great one for sea kayaking. It was a strange winter. It was actually one of the mildest winters on record, but it brought with it severe gales. And it seems that we were just battered for what seemed like weeks on end with some of the worst wind that I can remember in a long time. There were a number of named storms and the landscape still bears the scars of those storms. I've not actually been able to paddle much at all over the winter period, which is strange. I usually paddle year round all the way through the winter. However, you know, I've been very, very busy with work. I've got two lovely little boys who take up a lot of my time. Um, and any day that I seem to be free and able to go kayaking, the winds just brought an end to any plans that I had. So it's been a while since I've been on the water. However, there are some signs of spring showing themselves and with those signs come the hopes of better weather, calmer seas, lighter winds and more days that we can get out on the water and enjoy sea kayaking. As March came to a close, everything just seemed to align. I had a couple of free days and the forecast looked great, really settled nice blue skies, light winds, not much happening in the sea state. So we took the opportunity and made the most of it and went for a paddle up to one of the, the best spots around St Ab's Head. There were eight boats in total on the water that day, uh, a combination of the Borders Club and the Stockton Thornaby Club. So there were some familiar faces there as well as some new ones. And it was great to, to be back on the water with a, a good group of paddlers. Um, a lot of the paddlers in these groups are very strong and it was great to see them again um, and take the opportunity to get out there on the water and just enjoy the fantastic scenery that St Ab's Head offers. We paddled out of Eyemouth and paddled north towards St Ab's it was a lovely day, blue skies, really light winds, very little happening in terms of the sea. It was pretty flat, so flat in fact that we had to, to really try to find places to play among the rocks, especially around St Abs when we got there. It's always a staggering place to paddle this. You know, they've got these enormous sea cliffs towering above you, full of bird life. And on top of the cliffs, you've got one of the most recognizable lighthouses around with St. Ab's Head Lighthouse. St. Ab's Lighthouse was built in 1862, following the wreck of the Martello, a paddle steamer, on Carr Rocks just to the north of St Abs. It was thought that an additional light was needed in the area to assist with navigation alongside the lighthouses on the Isle of May and Bell Rock. St Abs Lighthouse was built by David and Thomas Stevenson and due to its prominent location on the cliffs at St Abs Head it stands only nine meters tall. Interestingly, it's actually situated uh, 250 feet up the, the cliff face, despite the fact that the cliffs rise as high as 300 feet. And this is because the tops of the cliffs at St. Ab's Head are often obscured by fog during bad weather. The lighthouse was interestingly the first lighthouse in Scotland to have a siren foghorn. I was actually recommended a book by a friend of mine and this book actually starts at St Ab's Head Lighthouse because the person that the book's about was born in the lighthouse themselves because their father was a lighthouse keeper there in the early 1900s. 
The book is called Archie's Lights and I'd really recommend it. It's a good read. Um, some really interesting tales about life as a lighthouse keeper in these really remote places um, out in the Western Isles of Scotland and some of the more remote islands as well. Um, yeah, so it's a, really, it's a really good read actually. It's still quite early in the season and the birds at St Ab's Head uh, were just starting to gather. The rocks were starting to fill up with guillemots and razorbills. There was a few gannets knocking about, some kittiwakes. So it wasn't a cacophony of noise like it normally is, but you know, in the next few weeks and months, those numbers will rise and it will be quite a sight to behold. It was nice to be able to get up there early with the camera just to get a few shots of the birds as they were settling in. for lunch at Petticoe Wick on the north end of St Abbs Head. It's always our preferred lunch stop um, as long as there's no seals hauled out on the rocks there. Um, it's quite a nice sheltered place to land and get your lunch. I actually had to shoot off a little bit early and paddle pretty quickly back to go and pick the boys up. Um, but it was still a fantastic day and you know, really, really good day out. Good one to start the season. It was a really good paddle, really good day on the water with some faces that I haven't seen in a while. Um, you know, missed them over the winter, so it was good to, to see them again, to have a little bit of banter, have a little bit of play around the rocks. Hopefully the weather will continue to improve and we'll get many more opportunities for, for great days out on the water like this one.